I have this fire alarm pulse station here that is not working. This is a notifier N-MPS-SA. This is a metal addressable T-bar style pulse station. I was recently working on an install where we were installing a whole bunch of these in a school and this one didn't work. I was able to take this one home and uh, I'm gonna see if I can fix it up or see what's wrong with it. And if we can't figure out what's wrong with it, we have two options that I suspect we might be able to do. This is an addressable pull station, so we have a addressable module on it. This is actually just a mini module. This is just a FMM-101A, I believe it is. Yes, notifier, notifier FMM-101A is the module on the back of this. This is just a modern module. And because of that, these actually do program differently than say an NBG12LX would where it shows up as pull station. This shows up as mini module or modern module. However, it comes up, it shows up a little bit differently. Now there's two possibilities here for what we might do with this. One is replace the modern module if that's the issue, which it likely is. Or if we don't want to do that, we just turn this into a conventional pull station. Now, obviously in a field, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to repair your own devices. They have to be from the manufacturer. As soon as you repair it or try and touch anything, it loses its UL and CSA listing and is no longer legal to be used on a system. That is why when you get a defective product like this, the option is to send it back to Honeywell for them to replace it or throw it out. Oftentimes it's cheaper and more, more realistically efficient just to throw it out instead of wasting the time to try and send it back. If we open this guy up and look inside here, you can see our model number there, N-MPS-SA. And as you see, this is a metal T-bar design. These are absolutely awful to install. I hate these pull stations. They're fine once they're installed for the most part, but they suck to install. I'll tell you why these suck to install. Number one, this back on it is huge, takes up so much room in the box. So for one, your box fill is just destroyed by this. Second of all, this little resistor that they put on the side here gets broken off super easy in install when you're trying to jam this thing into a box and it takes up literally the whole box. You have to be so careful not to break that resistor off. Another thing, tell me how you're supposed to set those address wheels on there, those rotary dials. They're completely blocked. You have to take these screws out, take this metal plate off just to be able to set the address. That's absolutely terrible design. As far as testing, and even at first setup, when you're trying to make sure your polarities are right, all your devices are responding, not being able to see the, the visual tolling indicator on this, showing that the device is talking, is really not as convenient as it is with an NBG12LX, where you can quickly look in the front, see if it's communicating. The hex lock kind of is a pain. I prefer a key. This is getting really picky, but it's small size, means retrofitting it over something existing. If the wall behind it isn't painted, this will not cover it. You'll be able to see that unlike something like an NBG 12 LX, this is Firelight, but same thing where it's the larger device. Another problem with these is just to open it, puts it into alarm. I hate pull stations that you open them, they go into alarm, any push button device. I'm not a fan. I, I like a toggle switch inside that gets flipped. I just find that's more reliable. Also push buttons are more prone to getting stuck in their position and not activating from what I've seen. The good about these devices is they're super tough, solid metal, the thing is really strong, and you have these machined threaded holes on either side here and here, and you can use those to put a flip up cover to make this uh, double action pull station where you have to lift and then pull, so that's good. Anyways, with all that said, let's see what's wrong with this. So there's a couple options now. We try and replace this module or we make it conventional. I think first we should see how hard it would be to replace this module. What is involved with replacing the module and then I'll decide if I want to make it addressable or conventional or not. So keep in mind doing an install, you have to set every one like this. You got to take the whole back off, which kind of sucks. This device I think would at least be more compact if it was made conventional because we wouldn't have this big module in the back. I know it's a mini mod, but it's still big to try and fit it in a box. So this is totally just a normal mini module. I've got another older one I could compare. This one's a way old one, but you can see it's the same size. You still have purple yellow for your conventional side, red black for your SLC. 
you would break it off depending on the panel you're using it because many panels like the AFP 200 can only have 99 detectors. Same with uh, the Firelight 9200, same idea. It will stop at nine there. So you have to break that off to be able to keep going to 159. And I don't know how they got this attached into here. Maybe these little clips stuck on. It might just be stickiness. Oh, well, that came off the front. Not saying that we'll make this still go back together. Just trying to get it apart. So that's what's going on in a mini module. Kind of interesting. Not much, really. It's this back part I'm interested in, though, which it looks like it's just stickiness. That is really sticky stuff. And I don't think that's ever going to get sticky again because that's kind of nothing now. Now, could I use some double side tape and stick another one on? I'm sure I could. I just don't know if I feel like doing that. Or if I'd rather make this conventional because that's not going to stick like that. I'd have to peel that off. Let's say we make this conventional. This is not at all to say that you couldn't fix this and make this addressable because you... You absolutely could. You could re-solder on that module. Again, totally not legal for a real building. Do not do that because this, at this point, has no CSA listing. And you cannot install any device in this country, electrical, without a CSA listing. And for the U.S., the UL, and we have ULC, which is the Canadian ULC listing. But, yeah, needs to be CSA. So this resistor is going to need to go... And we're going to need to connect these wires. There's no point in pulling them off of here. I don't think unless it'd be easier than these guys. Maybe it would be. Maybe we take the red black and solder it right onto here. So we're just gonna cut these right off the mod. And we're going to unsolder the purple leads from there. These are going to solder right onto there. One will cut right there. And strip it back. This guy will need to reach a little bit further to right here. back we're going to need to take this resistor out this is the end of line resistor for the modern module because the, the modern module needs to see a uh, 47 k ohm resistor i believe it's 47 k ohm it's got the monitor module needs to see otherwise it would see an open it's just the same as you'd have a end of line on a conventional system okay this is starting to melt the solder There we go, that's one side of the resistor pulled off. Okay, that's that one off. Oh, we're melting the black wire there. Okay, there's that uh, the other side of the resistor off. And we need to pull the purple wire out. Get some solder on there. By the way, I'm no no good, not very good at soldering. Yeah, that is stuck there, but I'd like to get a little bit more solder in there. Okay, and that guy is soldered on there.
Alrighty. You can see those are now fixed in there, nice and solid. So we can pretty easily test what we did worked if we hook up this, this working monitor module. Not very good job there. That shouldn't be stripped that long, but this is just to test it. Let's try and program it into this AFP 200. This is a clip system. This does not run flash scan, which is your modern addressable protocol for notifier Onyx series panels like the 320, 640, 3030, and the new Inspires, the N16. Those panels will all run flash scan. And then there's also the notifier NFW series, the Fire Warden series, which I believe they can run clip but they will also run light speed. They might call it something different, but it's the same as Firelight Light Speed. They're rebranded Firelight panels and they will run light speed, not flash scan. Light speed is still not quite as capable as the flash scan protocol and it is definitely still faster than clip, however. But this, for what we're concerned, we're talking genuine notifier and uh, any notifier module can run clip these AFP 200s and 400s, uh, these, these are great panels. I think it might have been an AFP 300 too. All right, let's go ahead and set this off. I hooked up one of these Mircom FHS-340s. This is a horn strobe. It can do a bunch of different tones. can do march time, temporal, steady, can do 2400 hertz, electromechanical, medium high. These can do lots of different options. I don't know if this NAC even programmed right to work with this horn. I'm not sure how this is, but we'll give it a shot. All right, three, two, one. Oh, we got to program it in first, of course. That was pretty freaking smart. Now this time it should find our monitor module. Didn't find it, what the heck? Just swapped our SLC around from A and it's going out on B. Makes me feel like an idiot. First I try and set it off without being programmed and I hook it up to the wrong side of the SLC. Today's just not my day. There we go. station. We've got the open circuit there, but we can stick this resistor back in there. All right, resistor is in and system is all normal. So you can set this off, see if it works. That was set to 2400 hertz, which was switch three and four on. No, just three on. So that was that was electromechanical. So let's turn four on. And here, 2400 hertz. Three, two, one. Sounds the freaking same. Okay, so we'll try 
switch three off, switch four on. See what that sounds like. I don't think this panel will let you unsilence. Well, can we do a drill and ring an alarm? No. Oh, we can. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing wrong because they all sound the same, but whatever. Anyways, guys, I guess that'll do it for this video. We uh, converted this pull station to a conventional one. So, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And if you do enjoy my channel, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you are interested, I do have an Instagram account, at Pickle700. For bonus content, content posted before you'd see it on the YouTube channel, extra stuff like that. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for watching.